This is the complete guide and the only one you need to unlocking all the camos in Modern Warfare 2. So we're going to be covering gold, platinum, polyatomic, and then finally unlocking Orion. So each weapon has specific challenges to unlock the gold camo challenge. Now most of them are pretty straightforward. Get kills, double kills, ADS kills. Some of them are a little bit more obscure, like getting prone and mounted kills. So what I recommend doing is getting your weapon max level or close enough and then doing the challenges. And if you want the fastest method to getting your guns leveled up in 15 minutes, I've already made a video on this and I'm gonna leave a link in the description. Now, once you've done that, if shipment is on the playlist, then hop into that and just crack on with the challenges. Once you complete all the challenges, the gold challenge is to get three kills without dying 10 times. And you can usually knock this out in around two games. And what you wanna do is be slightly aggressive for your first and maybe your second kill. But after you get the second kill, slow it down, hold an angle. Don't be afraid to camp a bit, as I can't tell you the amount of times I've got two kills, I've gone for the third, and then I die. But honestly, getting your gun to this stage is probably the longest part of the whole process. And once you've got a certain number of guns in that class gold, you can move on to doing the platinum challenges. Now you can do this by class, or what I did as I just went through and did all the guns gold and then went back and did the platinum. But it's up to you. You probably already have a lot of these challenges already done, but from start to finish, it'll probably take you around one to one and a half hour per gun to get gold. So if you can, just dedicate a whole day to doing this and you'll be able to smash out the majority of the guns in no time. Right, now that we finished gold, we're gonna move on to platinum. And if you find this video useful at any point, make sure you leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel for more uploads. So for assault rifles, battle rifles, LMGs, SMGs, shotguns, pistols, and snipers, you need long shots. For the launches, you need to take out kill shrieks, vehicles, or enemy equipment. For the riot shield and melee weapons, you need two kills within 10 seconds of each other. Now, in my opinion, the best maps for long shots are El Asilo, Tarak Village, Embassy, and Valderas Museum. But like I said, I'm going to show you the spots for every single map. And what I did for most of these, except for the snipers, launchers, and melee weapons, I loaded it into Hardcore Domination. Now you can play whatever mode you like, but I prefer Domination. And because the A, B, and C flags all show the distance, it just makes it a bit easier to gauge those long shots. And you can take people out when you're going to capture them. However, there is an optic that does show you the distance on the reticle. But for snipers and launchers, I played Ground War and Invasion. Now just note that the bot kills in Invasion don't count towards your camos, but you still get XP. So if you're looking to level up the weapons as well, just keep this in mind. But you can tell pretty easily who's a bot and who's not on Invasion. Now the reason I chose this game mode is that it's all very big maps and it makes it super easy to get those 50 meter long shots for the snipers. To get the launchers platinum, you need to destroy enemy vehicles, kill streaks, or equipment. And in ground war and evasion, there are UAVs and counter UAVs constantly going up throughout the match. The peeler and the joker lock onto targets, so it makes it super easy to take down the UAVs and counter UAVs. And because there are so many of these going up, it literally took me one game each for the Joker and the Peeler. I actually didn't do the Strella and I'd already done the RPG and shipment by destroying enemy munitions boxes, landmines, cluster mines. But because they don't lock on, it makes it a little bit harder to take out the kill streaks. The shotguns, I did something a little bit crazy. I put on a four times optic with slug rounds and I was hitting crazy 30 and 40 meter long shots. But since it's hardcore, you can probably just hit long shots normally. Now going through all the maps in alphabetical order, we have Albagra Fortress. This one is okay for long shots, probably better off doing SMGs, pistols, and shotguns, but you can still get a few good angles. For the hotel, this one has a couple of good angles. If you're looking straight down the middle from either side, you can usually get quite a few long shots. Crown Raceway is actually a pretty good map for long shots. Down either lane on the outside edges and even in the middle can pick you up quite a few long shots. Dome is pretty good for SMGs. I did most of my SMGs on this map. Uh, if you just look straight down the middle here, whack on a four times optic, or you could even get up on the dome itself and catch people coming out the door. Now, El Asilo is one of the best maps, like I said. Any edge of the map will get you really good angles for long shots. So you can look towards A or C. You can even go up on this hill here, aim at people at the window, and vice versa. If you hop into that window and mount, you'll get pretty good long shots. Embassy is also one of the best maps. Pretty much any edge of the map is perfect for long shots. All you have to do is go around the edge, or you can look straight down the middle, and there's people constantly running past. Just go to any of the four corners, and you'll pick up loads of long shots on this map. Farm 18 is more of a close range map, but there are a couple of angles for long shots. If you go right to the edge of the map here, look down here. 
If you hop onto the building and aim down that left side, you can catch people running through. And you can also peek through the gap and get people at the end. If you really wanted to, you can look down this way. But this is probably one of the best angles. You have a direct line of sight towards A. And if you're feeling a bit risky, you can also look down towards C. Las Almas is pretty good. You've got the lane straight down the middle, which most people tend to peak. And at the other side, if you get on this back wall, you're a little bit more hidden than if you were to jump on the caravan. But you could jump on there as well. If you really wanted to, you could go down this angle and catch people down the hallway. Now, I did about 24 hours of playtime, and not once did I get the Santa Senio border crossing map. This map got a lot of negative feedback. I think they've really reduced the chances of it being in the rotation, so I wouldn't even really worry about it. Uh, shipment isn't really good for long shots, maybe shotguns, and at a stretch, pistols, but shipment is best just for the goal grind and probably the polyatomic for the headshots. Now, shoot house, obviously straight down the middle. I'm actually not that big of a fan of shoot house, and I think everyone kind of knows people are always aiming down the middle. So nowadays, people don't really stand up there and they don't peek. So with Shoot House, I just did other guns. I did my shotguns, my pistols, just because it wasn't really worth sitting at the end all that time to get maybe three or four headshots. Tarak Village, also one of the best maps for long shots. Pretty much any angle on this map is a long shot. Go to either of the corners, any of the buildings, and you're pretty much guaranteed to get a long shot. Another one of the best maps is the museum. Now this is a new map. Well, it was in a beta, but I never actually played the beta, so it's new to me. Sit down the end here. You can also come to the middle at the fountain, get people coming at B or at the back near C. And if you come up here to the little coffee stand and you get up there, you can catch people coming from A, also that side balcony and also at B. And if you wanted to, you can stand at this back here. Now hydroelectric, is good for SMGs. I did most of my SMGs on this map. If you just go straight down the middle, there's constantly people running left and right here. You can also hop in the back, get up on this little rock and shoot people coming down there. At a stretch, you can catch people coming at sea. Also on this balcony is pretty good. And then obviously the other side of the middle. So a couple of tips and tricks, uh, especially for the launcher, make sure you're using the spotter perk. This highlights enemy kill streaks, vehicles, and equipment in red, so it makes it a lot easier to spot the UAVs and counter UAVs in the sky. When the UAV gets called, obviously you'll get an alert. Make sure you look to the sky and shoot it down as quick as possible. Especially the Joker, it takes so long for it to hit the target that sometimes, that if you wait too long to shoot it, the UAV will actually finish before the missile hits it. When I was doing my assault rifles, I'd always run overkill and have the SMG or shotgun as my secondary. This is so if I got put into a map that wasn't great for long shots, rather than back out, I'd just do the shotguns instead. This way you're being a bit more efficient with your time and you won't ruin your win-loss ratio. Also, just be patient. I can't tell you the amount of times I've held an angle and then the second I turn away, someone runs past. It is a bit tedious, but if you follow these steps, you'll get through it pretty quickly. Make sure you set up your weapons for range and recoil control as sometimes you will have to shoot pretty far. So you've just finished platinum and you're ready to move on to polyatomic. And you'll be glad to hear the hard part is over. Now with long shots out of the way for polyatomic you need headshots and these are pretty easy to be honest and just to compare platinum took me around 24 hours in total playtime whereas polyatomic only took me 17. for the first few weapons i hopped into hardcore kill confirmed or i just played free for all and i was averaging around 8 to 10 headshots per game and then a few days later they put shoot the shit back in the playlist and that's all i played for the next few days and it was taking me a maximum of two games for one gun. Some guns I even did in one game, and these were mostly the single shot weapons. So your pistols, marksman rifles, and battle rifles are probably the easiest guns to get headshots. So for the pistols, I put an optic on, usually just a mini reflex one, uh, just so your shots are a bit more accurate. As long as you aim for the head, you're most likely to get a headshot. Now the basilisk, probably one of the most fun guns to use to get headshots. And I actually got 12 headshots in one game. Same goes for the Deagle. As long as you aim for the head, you're guaranteed a headshot. And it's so satisfying. Now for shotguns, all you need to do is set them up for range, hide a pellet spread, and just aim in the general direction of their head. Most of the time, you'll end up getting a headshot. Battle rifles, I set them up for recoil control. I would either put on the Schlager 34 times optic or the VLK, and it's a one shot.
For SMGs, assault rifles, and LMGs, I normally aim for the head or the upper chest and usually the recoil will drag itself to the head anyway. I actually found hip firing at close range should be an effective way to get headshots. Sometimes you won't get the headshot, it'll end up just being a body shot, but it's important to remember to just commit to the kill anyway, because sometimes, even if you think it's not a headshot, it might actually count. And some games you'll just find yourself in the zone, and you'll just get headshot after headshot after headshot. Sometimes I'd just be in such a good rhythm and getting 10 to 15 headshots a game. Other games I'd struggle a bit and only get maybe five. My preferred optic for getting these headshots was the DF105 reflex sight. It offers a nice clean sight, which makes it easy for lining up those headshots. But you can use whichever one you prefer. The only launcher I did platinum was the RPG, and I found this the easiest. And what I did, I just had it as a secondary, and if I saw multiple players together on shipment, I'd just fire a launcher at them and get the double kill. I did this over a fair few games, I didn't focus on it too much. I actually ended up skipping the other launches because I found them a bit difficult. For some reason, I don't know if it's a bug, but it actually let me get the headshots for some of the marksman rifles, even though I didn't have them gold or platinum. But it only worked for certain marksman rifles and not all of them, which I found a bit weird. But either way, this made the grind a little bit easier as I tried to get a few double kills with the peeler and I was just struggling. So these are my main tips for getting headshots. Bruh.